Good evening, everyone. Um, it is five o'clock, so we'll go ahead and begin our um, February 12th meeting of the Utilities Service Board. Just as a reminder, if any board member has any personal or financial conflict with any issues or individuals on the agenda, then please be sure to recuse yourself during those portions of the meeting. Um, first, we'll start with our petitions and communications or public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? Okay. All right. Um, next, we have approval of the minutes. We have two meetings to approve. First, um, January 29th, 2024, the regular meeting. Are there any questions or comments or corrections? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the January 31st bid opening meeting minutes. Are there any questions, changes, additions? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval of the claims, starting with our payable invoices in the amount of $330,646.45. Are there any questions? Yes. Yeah, it's on the second one. And I have a question about that. Why do we have two claims now? Two sets of claims. It's a relatively new thing. Yeah. We don't have all of the claims for 2023. So as they come in, if they're for last year, we put them on last year's ledger date. And then, but at the same time, we're still getting new ones for this year as well. So we have to keep them separate in, in different periods. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes, the mm -hmm. date's payable. Oh, it says 12 30 24. That's what threw me. That should be 23. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I, I understand now. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the payable invoices? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have standard invoices in the amount of $889,003.35. Are there any questions? Yes. Hi, I have two questions. Um, the first one is um, the ONI risk partners. These must all be insurance payments. And it, our property insurance seemed, I just don't recall having um, a, uh, payment of that magnitude. Is this in line with past years or has there been an increase? I honestly don't know, um, but this is based on um, our increased insurance costs um, and risk allocation to each of our departments, but I can look into the past years if you'd like I was to. Just, I yeah. don't, just didn't remember what the value was I don't either, to be honest year. with you. So. Okay, um, no problem there. Uh, State of Indiana, um, three charges uh, and two of them are, for, one's public water system fee, the other's pu public water supply fee, both for the water system. And then there's two municipal major and flow fee at Dillman and then one for Blucher, and they both got applied to water. Uh, yeah, what, what, oh, okay. I saw that as well. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yep, no problem. Thank you for your questions. Anyone else have any questions about the standard invoices? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have utility bills in the amount of $12,932.38. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the wire transfers in the amount of $547,993.57. Are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Finally, we have customer refunds in the amount of $9,561.76. Are there any questions? Yes. And if this was explained before, I apologize, I, I missed it, or I know one meeting I came in a little bit late. These are a lot of the people, the names that we're seeing on it are the ones that were on the no, or no response. Uh, those are the 
care of, I think maybe two board meetings ago. Um, what we did was we started to, we changed the dating of our process. We're starting to look at last year's now, it's just since it's, it's easier to get a hold of people if, if it hasn't um, aged out over seven years. Um, so we're just finding these inactive accounts that have been active over a year and we're trying to find and refund them their money. So what we were, what we were trying to approve the week, the, the meeting before, did we ever come back and approve? We did, okay. Because like I said, I missed part of, the, of, of, of a meeting, so I apologize for that, so. Uh, we came back the, the next yeah. meeting and got approved. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, thank you. No problem. <clears throat> so to clarify, the folks on this refund list are from the last year, and so we're trying to catch them before they're too f gone. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. So on page one, uh, John Edward Huffer, the, the note says paid wrong company, and I couldn't understand that. Um, What's that? He meant to pay a different utility than the city of Bloomington utilities. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the customer refunds? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That finishes our claims. Next, um, the approval of the consent agenda. Finance, um, I'll be presenting tonight's consent agenda, totaling uh, $10,475 that's not including the chemical contracts. Uh, we have uh, one for 4100 for Heflin Industries for some pipes. Um, there is an air gas contract to supply aqua ammonia to a mineral plant. Uh, commercial services for 3735 for a heater. Um, and then Zyle Mars Solutions, the 2640 for um, a high service pump. Um, is there any member who wishes to consider one or more of these items individually? Uh, hearing none, if there is no opposition, these items will be approved as recommended by staff. Uh, hearing no opposition, the consent agenda is approved. Thanks. Thank you. Moving ahead on the agenda, we have a, re a request for approval of resolution 24-044 to designate surplus property as worthless. Matt Havey. Have 12 first aid kits that are expired that we, re that we replaced that we'd like to get rid of and that there are two spotlights that no longer work that we'd like to get rid of. Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve resolution 24-04? All in favor, please say aye. Aye, opposed, motion carries, thank you. Next. Next, we have a request for approval for Wessler Engineering to provide an asset management capital improvement plan for the Monroe Water Treatment Plant. Dan Hudson. For the record, I'm Dan Hudson, the Capital Projects Manager for the City of Bloomington. I'd like the board to consider Wessler uh, study to do an asset management uh, improvement plan and a capital improvement plan for the uh, Monroe Water Treatment Plant uh, for $232,000. Uh, the project will basically rank all of the major pieces of equipment by risk of failure and potential of failure for each one and give us a score. Uh, they will also develop a capital improvement plan for the major items that need repair, not in addition to the plant, but for repair of the plant. Uh, they're gonna give us costs, construction costs, and the study will be used primarily for the upcoming rate study that's going to happen this year. I'm open for any questions on it. Yeah. Dan, I don't know if you have this answer or not, um, but are we doing this with our other facilities as well or is this something that we're going to be looking at for other facilities uh, we are going to be including that for the blucher pool study and I'd, i would have liked to had it on this agenda but it didn't quite make it so okay. we're going to put it on next agenda but that's a little different we're going to combine some design work with the study okay. <laughs> for the blucher pool the uh uh, Dillman plant is, uh, we're moving forward. We know pretty much what we need to do <laughs> on right. that. We're in <laughs> under the phase two design now. Okay. 
But um, I, I just want to comment that I think yeah. this is a good idea that we do have this, um, you know, for all of the the plant, you know, the various plants and their assets. Um, it it certainly will help with you know planning for future capital expenditures and yes. improvements. Um, we all know that stuff will come up even though we don't calculate that it's going to to go defunct. Um, but to have this on record, I think, is a great idea, and, and doing it in advance of the rate case is very helpful. Um, the other question I had is, what what was the amount that you said? This was it, two hundred thirty-two thousand. Uh, yes, two hundred thirty-two thousand. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Those were my questions. Okay. Thank you. When did we do this one last? Uh, there was a long-term um, capital plan that was done by Black and Veatch in huh? two thousand three. <laughs> And uh, I think it was updated again in about 2010. I'm not sure of that date, but it was, I just read the 2003 report. Uh, so it needs to be done. And the last rate review, part of the complaint we got from the, um, from the reviewers was that we didn't have backup material for the cost development. And they really do like to see <laughs> a study report done by an outside firm. So we're really looking at a 10-year horizon, perhaps? Perhaps. Uh, like I said, it doesn't do any increase of capacity right. or change of type of treatment. It's Our just taste and odor is outside of this report. <laughs> so this just fixes all this stuff that we have now. Well, it, it, yeah. Gives us an assessment about where yeah. we are with our current capital equipment. Right? Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thanks. Okay. The assessing, they don't do any of the fixing. They they are not contractors. Uh, they they're designers and. Um, they're engineers, basically. Now, I'm, I'm just checking yeah. to, I mean, you don't want the assessment made by someone that would then do the fixing. Oh, absolutely. So just, <laughs> I, I totally I, agree with I you on that. I couldn't tell yes. from their description <laughs> yes. what they did. Yeah, okay. yeah. Wessler has done a lot of uh, design work for us. They, they did the, the belt press design that we're finishing up now. They also did the residual tank design and also the bar screen design. So they're sort of specializing in the the, the water side okay. for us. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So we, if this is information that's useful to the rate case, and we're Absolutely. on a four-year schedule for for water every other two years, right? Yes. Um, presumably, we'd want to have this type of information again in, in four years. It would be helpful, yes. So there's two ways we could go about that. We could pay another 232 plus however much, or maybe they do it again at a lower price. Or um, somehow there's a, there was a model that they deliver to us and we're able to update ourselves. Presumably, we're paying this money now because it's a it's beyond the scope of what our staff can do right now. Yes. Okay. Right. So what, I guess I, I'd be interested in the feasibility of in four years having staff do the update between now and four years so we have that model in place. Now maybe we, we, can, we contract with them to get updated costs or some other portion of it, but it seems like this type of uh, planning um, uh, mo this type of planning model would be useful for us to keep in house and maintain over time, mm -hmm. rather than every four years have to, to have to make this payment. I totally agree with you, the, especially the asset management part of the of the study, where it looks at criticality and potential failure. As we upgrade equipment, that's going to change, and we we can change the score ourselves in house. And those scores can be kept in our current management system, our uh, city works that we're using. And so we can rank our equipment and change it ourselves. The cost will be terribly different. As new projects come up, it's, it's difficult for us sometimes to get a reasonable cost. Is this a conversation you could have with staff about how we might um, preserve 
the value that we're putting into this report and, and update it so that four years from now, when we have this conversation, when, when I will not, either I'm not here, I won't remember <laughs> that we, we had this conversation that, that you'll say, oh yeah, and you know, this time we, we're doing it this way. Yeah, the, I think the best way is to put it in a software asset management system, and, and uh, we have that. I don't know if we have the module for that. I may have to look into it. Well, but, that, that's what yeah. I'm wondering. That we, I yeah. mean, if we wait, then it, it's quickly out of date, and it becomes an overwhelming thing, and we four years we're back in the same in the, in the same situation. Yes, so and just, just a dusty report on a. Um, so I'm just asking somewhere. if we could, we could, you know, work with staff and, and have that discussion and, and see what our options are. Yeah. And it could be maybe once a year, you know, spend a, a week and going through it and see if we can update it. Yeah. Just an idea. Thanks. Anything else? Other Good questions. questions. <laughs> well, I, since yeah. you mentioned the taste and uh, odor of the water, yes. what, um, what is... I know this is not tied to this contract, but what are yeah. what are our plans here for that? Well, that was we were originally looking at combining that with this, mm -hmm. but then we said no. It's really that's a big topic, and, and that needs to be studied and evaluated mm -hmm. on its own. So we have looked at a couple of different routes uh, for for doing that, and right now we don't have a particular route to go. Um, a lot of that is going okay. to depend on our budget sure. <laughs> that we have. Um, yeah. But that is something on the radar for this year to study because we know this is a pattern now for the last three years. Yes. And so, um, and that's, and unfortunately, like every, the customers all notice that, you know. Um, that's the big part and, of it. And but so um, I, I would just hope to accelerate that if we can. And, and if we can't fit it into our budget, then what do we need to look at so that it that it does? Since we spend a lot of money on a lot of other things. Yeah. And, and taste and right. odor is important, but actually, what's more important is water. Absolutely. <laughs> Getting the water. Absolutely. But with our customers, um, you know, they expect that it comes safe to their tap at home. Yeah. Um, and they expect that it tastes good and it doesn't stink. And yes, so um, right. we, you know, I, I don't, I hate to see all the complaints because I know how hard everyone works here yeah. and, and uh, we don't, the staff doesn't deserve that. So we, we okay. don't want to have that problem. Okay. So, all okay. Right. Thank you. Thank all right. You. So back on to our uh, item here. Um, if there are no further questions, then do we have a, a motion to approve the Wessler engineering um, to provide asset management capital improvement plan for the Monroe water treatment plant? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have approval, a request for approval of Resolution 24-05 for bid acceptance and contract award for the State Road 45 Arlington Road to Stone Lake Drive Water Main Relocation. Jane Fleeg. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Jane Fleeg for the record. Um, you do have the resolution in your packet. Um, we opened bids for this project on January 31st. Uh, we had five bids uh, that were timely and responsive. Uh, we have reviewed them along with our consulting engineer, and the lowest responsible and responsible bidder is EMB Paving LLC for the base bid amount of $263,693. This bid also had two bid alternates for prices only for um, utilizing uh, ductile iron pipe instead of PB PVC pipe. And because the prices were identical, we have chosen to reject the bid alternates and move forward only with the base bid. Uh, again, that is in the amount of $263,693. And we would like to go ahead and begin contracting with ENB Paving and hopefully bring that back to the board next meeting. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Jane? Yeah. Sure. Iron pipe, or are we using PVC? We're going to use the PVC. Tell me about the difference in long term 20, um, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years? <laughs> Again, it, it, uh, the pipe types are supposed to have equivalent life times, life cycles. Um, we have always used ductile iron pipe, and honestly, we've been having more and more issues with ductile iron 
than we should. We've certainly spoken to the ductile iron manufacturers. They say everything is fine, but we're finding that we're replacing um, ductile iron pipe that's been put in in the 90s, uh, 1990s, we're having failures on. So um, we have looked at other communities that have used um, PVC, and I know that our um, T&D department has been switching over to the uh, PVC. It does have to have a wire run with it so that you can uh, trace it, but um, the life cycle of it is um, equivalent or better based on the more recent Dr. Lyron Pipe projects that we've had. Mm -hmm. It's okay. unfortunate. I mean, we really we've put a lot of money into Dr. Lyron, um, and it's just not performing in the manner that it should. We're not the only community having that problem. Okay. Good. Thank you. Other questions for Jane? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve resolution 24-05 to accept the bid and contract award to E&B e Paving? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jane. Next, we have a request for approval of contract with Scruggs Construction, Inc. for site restoration at the Showers Building Plaza. James Hall. Hi. James Hall, um, AD of t and &E. Um, we had a main break, um, it was when it was really cold, like single digits, uh, right outside of City Hall at Madison and 8th Street, um, right where the B line kind of comes in there and it broke in the showers plaza. And so it was a 12 inch main that's fed by an 18, so it was a lot of water. It pushed all the sand and that under material from the pavers up and about half the block there between 8th and 7th Street. It's about 11,000 square feet of pavers that at some point have some kind of undulation in them when we're disturbed by the water. And so it's a little outside the scope of my team and their construction habits and the timeline that uh, it needs to be repaired. We're trying to get it repaired uh, before um, farmer's market opens in April, the first weekend in April. And so we reached out to a construction company. So we have a contract here for $139,472.30 to pick all those pavers up, redo the under, under the base of it and then put them back down and uh, replace any that may be missing from the main break. Thank you. Any questions for James? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the contract with Scrug Scruggs Construction? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have requests for approval of professional services agreement with Crow LLP for financial analysis, reports, and presentations to USB, Council, and IURC for non-recurring rates for utilities. Matt Havey. Two um, processes we're trying to update with this. Um, the first one is we have what we call waste haulers, is the people that go out and empty out septic tanks. Uh, they come here and they pay us here for what we call a dump ticket, and then they go down to Dillman and dump. Um, those rates haven't been updated in over 12 years, so we would like Crow to have a look and see what we, we should be charging for these dump tickets. Uh, the second piece is we have what we refer to as non-recurring charges. Um, it's like if James's team goes out and does work for a citizen, and correct me if I'm misspeaking here on this too, James, but um, we would charge them an uh, a, a hourly rate, um, and those rates haven't been updated since 2000. So we're, we're just trying to get these fees up to 2024 um, rates. Questions for Matt. Hearing none, do we have a motion to rec uh, approve the professional services agreement with Crow LLP? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have, thank you. Next, we have a request for approval of professional services agreement with Crow. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, with Crow LLP for financial analysis reports and presentations to USB Council and IURC for 2024 water rate adjustment case. Matt. So this is this is Crow doing um, our revenue requirements analysis uh, for the rate case we're doing for our water utility this year. Amanda. So <clears throat> are are they not doing that as part of the other one that we so. I don't understand why water's in there twice then, because the description on the summary of the contracts are, are um, 
Are, oh, this is for non-recurring rates. Okay. Correct. And then this is water rate adjustment case. Going forward, yes. So they can't, it's, they can't they include two, that in they, there? They wanted okay. two separate engagements. Okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Other questions? Hearing none, do we have a, a motion to approve the professional services agreement with Crow LLP for the 2024 water rate adjustment case? So moved. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have requests for approval of First Amendment with Electric Plus Inc. for heater installation and electrical installation at Blucher Pool Wastewater Plant. Hector Ortiz Sanchez. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Hector Ortiz, for, uh, Assistant Director Operation. Um, we, this is a, an amendment to, <coughs> we are working on, <laughs> we are working on rehab, one uh, old building. Um, and this amendment is to install a new transformer um, that wasn't in the scope. Um, we want to relocate the UV system or the UV lights, and, and I don't know, here to answer any question. Thank you. <laughs> any questions for Hector? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the First Amendment um, with Electric Plus? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on, old business. Oh, do we have any old business from the board? Old business from staff. New business from the board. New business from staff. No. There were no subcommittees this week, so we have no subcommittee reports. Staff reports. Got some today. So, um, <coughs> First off, we'd like to congratulate Tony Eads for his promotion, promotion to maintenance superintendent. Uh, this is a, a new role with uh, CBU. We're consolidating all, all the maintenance people from all the plants into one, one group. So he, he's going to lead our, our maintenance team. And I apologize if I messed this up, but welcome Renata Wiltfong. Uh, she's our new lab tech. Um, another thing is this upcoming Thursday, we look forward to hearing our water quality coordinator, Justin Meshker, speak to the Indiana chapter of the American Water Works Association. His talk is about CBU's innovative service line inventory related to the EPA's lead and copper rule. So if you're interested in that. Um, then I believe Jason Winning has something to talk about. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, I'm Jason Winning. I'm the pretreatment coordinator, and I'm just here to give everyone a quick update on what we're doing with our wastewater monitoring program here. Um, we started back in June of 2020 monitoring wastewater for uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, and we've continued that program since then, um, and since then we've expanded out a little bit. We're currently part of three different programs uh, doing wastewater sampling. Um, one's with a company called Verily, uh, their program Wastewater Scan, um, which is in conjunction with Emory and Stanford. We're collecting for them from our Dillman plant four times a week. Um, they've expanded from COVID to, we are up to one, two, three, four, five, six different um, diseases or viruses that they're looking for now. Um, and we're reporting that to them four times a week. We're getting results back generally within a week on those. Um, we're contributing to uh, the State Department of Health. Um, they have a sampling program as well um, that is in conjunction with the CDC News Program, which has been the main uh, repository for all these COVID samples since, um, since the program began. Um, and their program is just COVID at this point. Um, we're submitting there twice a week. Um, from both the Dillman and Blucher plants. And then we're also continuing our partnership with Dr. Greaves lab at IU. Uh, we're collecting samples for him twice a week from four different sites uh, around the city. And um, we're getting those analyzed for uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, influenza, and RSV um, at this point. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has about the program. Uh, 
where do we, where are we posting all these on the city sites? Which websites do we put these on so the public can keep an eye on them as well? So the samples from Dr. Greaves' lab, um, those are posted um, on Socrata through the city's Be Clear portal. Um, right now, I will say the Dr. Greaves' lab results are a couple weeks behind. Um, they had some lab shortages as far as staffing goes, so they're a little behind on turning those around. However, the results from IDOH, uh, those are all put into, again, the CDC news program. Um, you can Google it. They actually have a, a data report page. You can go in. Um, you can uh, go ahead and you can drill down to county level and actually plant level um, and see what our most recent results are for Blucher Pool or Dillman Road. Similarly, with wastewater scan, um, you can go to Verily. Um, dot com. They also have uh, a data reporting site there where you can drill down to uh, plant level data for both of our wastewater plants and um, and that will give you up to date information. Um, I just checked it this morning and they have everything as of last Thursday's reporting. So nothing yet for this week obviously but uh, but yeah, those do stay up to date. How do we spell that last one? <laughs> Verily, V-E-R-I-L-Y. Yeah, and is there a way we can link those on to Be Clear so that it's in one pl place for everybody to, because uh, that's kind of the city public information portal. Right. I mean, it's nice that they're on the other sites, but it just make it easier for people to find. Understandable, yeah. If it's, no, a, if it's easy to do that yeah we could absolutely look at uh at posting links to yeah. to those to those as well because if one lab is behind or whatever you could look at another one and that sort of thing and you know i think it wouldn't be a bad idea just to revisit if if we could send your report basically what you just told us out to uh our health practitioner community you know, the County Board of Health and, you know, IU Health and the Medical Association and things like that, just to remind them that we're still doing this and it's a great resource for them to track the community's health. It seems to me like that'd be a good thing for us. It wouldn't take a whole lot of effort, but. Yeah, absolutely, and, and these results are available immediately to our County Health Department. Um, I, I know that they receive updates as well on, on all these results as they come out, so. Um, yeah, as people change and that sort of thing, it's, I know it's not on everybody's radar screen these days, but it's still helpful when you can figure out, you know, if flu is up or COVID's down or whatever, it, 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 yeah. it's a good thing. Yep, absolutely. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so right now, and again with the giant caveat that I'm not a public health professional, <laughs> um, the numbers are, uh, at least for COVID, they've been a little elevated ever since about October. We saw uh, a bit of a peak and that's kind of plateaued since then. Um, and we see that across uh, all three reporting programs. Um, the flu, Flu A, flu B, those have been up and down. Um, same for RSV, but uh, right now I, the, the COVID numbers are, are a little elevated. <clears throat> Is there any discrepancy between what gets reported to professionals in terms of people testing or going into their provider and the data from the wastewater? On that, I have not compared um, any clinical data to our wastewater data recently. Um, but I've seen multiple studies showing that those are pretty concurrent, um, you know, on the national level, um, that, you know, when you see an elevation in cases and hospitalizations, you also see the elevation in the wastewater as well. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Could you please remind me of our cost uh, for this program? I know we, we paid in, we we paid for this, correct? Yes. yes. So, um, so for the three programs, uh, the wastewater scan program with Verily, mm -hmm. um, that is no cost to us. Okay. Uh, the IDOH program is also no cost to us. Um, the partnership with Dr. Greaves Lab, we are in the second year of our contract with them. 
Um, and that is running us around $4,500 a month okay. for sampling. So. And can you remind me how long the contract with that lab is for? It is a two-year contract okay. um, that will run through October of this year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you so much for coming to give us that report. We appreciate thank you. it. Oh, sorry, oh. one other, another question. I just didn't. Oh. I just didn't see. Yeah, well, so at no cost. So, are we providing the sampling time and, and containers and whatnot to Department of Health and the Verily? Or I mean, it there, is there is some cost, right? It, it, it's, it's staff. staff. It's staff time. Okay. It's staff time. They provide all materials and equipment. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. Anything else? Okay, do we have any? Did you have something yeah. to add? Transitions <laughs> and communications? Yes. Yes, public comments? Come on down. My name is John Langley. I'm your interim director and um, enjoying the second tour at Utilities. And uh, wanted to welcome some new employees. First of all, uh, Renate Wilfong it has. Um, been, is a new employee and she's a lab tech and Jose Fuentes is the assistant or no the purchasing manager um, and we had some internal transfers um, most of these people I, I do know uh, Tony Eads went for the, from the superintendent of T&D to um, the maintenance and ops superintendent uh, Ron Arthur, uh, who used to be an MEO in t and has moved to Blucher Pool, also as an MEO. Noah Campbell uh, is a utility special, or was a utility specialist too in t and and he is also now a um, uh, heavy equipment operator. And then Braden Bonchek, um, was a temporary purchasing, purchasing specialist, and he is now a regular part-time uh, specialist. And Bill Ramey, who uh, was a temporary part-time laborer, has moved to full-time. So, thank you. And I guess all the people new. Any other communications? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you.